Yeah, welcome back. We're leading us into a commodities market conversation this morning. Let's see what's happening in the oil prices space. And we see that prices climbed today, hitting their highest levels in at least three years. Extending gains triggered during the previous session after the world's major oil producers announced that they had decided to keep a cap on crude supplies. Brent's crude was up 40 cents to $81.66 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate Oil rose 30 cents to $77.92 after gaining 2.3% the previous session. OPEC Plus has decided to maintain an agreement to increase oil production only gradually, ignoring calls from the United States and India to boost output as the world economy recovers. Oil prices have already surged more than 50% this year, and that's a rise that has added to inflationary pressures that crude consuming nations are concerned will derail recovery from the pandemic. Well, how does this affect Nigeria, seeing that Nigeria's major source of imports uh, of foreign reserve is in the oil sector. We have Dumi BEAK, analyst with Financial Derivatives Company, talking to us on that. Good to have you, Dumi B. Good Thank morning. You. Good morning. Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, should we say it's time to celebrate or should we say it's time to, <laughs> to have deep, deep thinking uh, with this increase in oil prices? I mean, it's a double edged sword. Um, so there is reason to be excited um, as oil prices are higher now, and that's because. Um, that could boost Nigeria's export earnings. But the downside um, is that oil production hasn't significantly increased. Um, Nigeria's oil production as of August fell to about 1.27 um, uh, million barrels per day, despite the fact that OPEC has, you know, increased um, output, even though not, you know, not substantially. Not fully, yeah. But I mean, there is, you know, the OPEC quota has been eased for Nigeria. Nigeria now should be able to produce up to about 1.8 1 yes. million barrels per day, but we're producing about 1.27. And that's due to, you know, supply um, disruptions and vandalism that's really, really hurting Nigeria's um, oil supply. And Nigeria is more sensitive to changes in oil production than prices, meaning that Despite the fact that oil prices are higher, Nigeria's oil revenue or export earnings could still be low because of lower oil production. So why, why are we cheating ourselves? Because this is like you have an opportunity. Mm. I mean, we're talking of our reserves dwindling. We're yeah. talking of our, uh, we need more FX inflows. Mm -hmm. And this is a major source of FX inflow. Mm -hmm. And yet, we're doing less than we, we are allowed to, at least. I mean, um, like, I, like I mentioned, it still has to do with the issues affecting Nigeria's oil supply. So not until those issues are addressed before Nigeria's oil production can actually you know, improve so much so that we'd see a significant boost in um, oil revenues. But from um, the standpoint of oil prices, we're also looking at Nigeria's break-even point. Yes, oil prices are 81 you know, dollars per barrel. That's good news. You know, we could see um, some increase in revenue. But um, Nigeria's break-even break point is by $137 per barrel, meaning that for the economy to really stabilize, if oil production, you know, remains at its current level, we need oil prices to be at least $137. But this is more than our benchmark from our budget. Yes, so we should be counting our, profits. I mean, it's more than our benchmark, yes. But at the end of the day, we look at the fact that the economy is experiencing a a huge revenue shortfall. We, we, we can't always depend on oil revenues. And yes, we might receive some money, but we also need to look at the fact that there are other sources of revenue that are dwindling. Our cultural sector is dwindling. The cocoa, cocoa exports is, is declining. So there's a lot of other things that go on to boost government revenue other than um, uh, um, just oil. And remember that Yes, we're receiving money from oil, but we also look at the fact that almost 80% of our revenue goes into debt servicing. So right now, we're not only looking at, because when we receive money, how you know an economy is growing or developing is when you receive money, and this money is used or pumped into the economy, pumped into capital projects that would spur, you know, um, investment and, and spur, and you know, spur employment, spur output growth. But that's not the link. The link right now is we receive money, money that is not exactly sufficient, and we use that to service debt, or we put it into recurrent expenditure. Yeah. So apart from even the debt, first of all, you still have the subsidy. We are still paying for subsidies. Exactly. So, exactly. Even though Nigeria cannot maximize 
you know, the increase in oil prices, mm -hmm. it still increases the subsidy that has to be paid because um, you're buying at international rates. Exactly, exactly. So that's another um, angle looking at how this affects Nigeria. So there is also the subsidy, subsidy payments. Even though the PIA has been, you know, signed and all, the um, subsidy payments are still existing. And that's because... Um, there's still the talk between, you know, the labor unions and the government as to what time would be the right time to actually um, take off subsidies. And with the fact that we're still paying subsidies, that has also in eaten into um, the FAC allocation. You know, so the NNPC has said that they're going to actually reduce or they're going to have li almost little or no contribution to the FAC person because of subsidy payments. And each time um, oil prices increase, what this means is that we're going to continue to pay more in terms of subsidy. Um, and if subsidy goes away, we're going to definitely see an increase in um, the inflation. domestic price of mm -hmm. uh, a PMS that would also feed into And to think that uh, the budget for 2022 mm. also PMT, has provision yes. for, uh, uh, for subsidy. You know, I would have thought we would have started preparing ourselves by now yes. since the talks with the unions are already on mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, getting Nigerians prepared for it and maybe preparing some buffer that yeah. would, you know, because we do know, obviously, PMS mm -hmm. goes up, then yes. prices go up, food prices go up, transportation mm -hmm. goes up. Even even crops, everything yeah. goes up. Yeah. You know, one would have thought that we'll start preparing ourselves because if we are making budget, if we are budgeting for subsidy again for 2022, mm -hmm. then when are we going to work on this thing? I mean, so those are like the concerns that a lot of investors, um, both domestic and global, you know, have concerning um, the policy space for Nigeria. Um, you know, there's a lot of ambiguity and unclear um, um, approach when it comes to some of these things. And this is because something is said, but the implementation, you know, goes um, the, other, the other way. So um, this definitely is going to continue to heighten investor um, uh, 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 and pessimism. And investor concerns are going to definitely tilt towards the negative area. And remember that the world is fast transitioning away from fossil fuels. Exactly. Yes, currently there is um, high demand right now. And that's because the global economy is rebounding. There is, and we're approaching the winter season. So there's going to continue to um, be that increase in oil demand. And there's currently that supply deficit. So um, oil prices could continue to you know, increase, even though um, we're looking at um, the fact that the world is transitioning away from oil, we're That's looking okay. at electric vehicles, we're looking. So there is that conversation, but definitely Nigeria is still very late to the party. And with all of these things that are happening, investors are going to you know, still be looking, raising eyebrows towards um, what is happening in the downstream petroleum sector, because clearly prices are still not yet um, cost reflective. And for that, um, for investors to actually pump in funds towards the sector, cost has to be very reflective. And then, uh, do you see this price hitting to the dream price of Nigeria, the 137? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, not, not, not exactly, but um, Goldman Sachs has, you know, um, come up with a forecast that oil prices could actually hit $90 per barrel by year end. And um, with, 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 with Nigeria's position in terms of like 2021 budget benchmark, which is 40, the new MTEF 2022 is about 57, um, and we have 55, 57, 57 as well yeah. for 2022, 2023, 2024. So clearly Nigeria um, is still in a, um, we're still able to hedge, you know, against po possible oil price shocks. And that's because the global economy sees that oil prices could actually maintain this rally while we are saying $50 per barrel, $57 per barrel. So we're, we're likely going to, you know, still be able to hedge against any possible oil price shock, which is kind of good. Um, we're going to be able to hedge away from external vulnerabilities, external imbalances coming from that uh, um, um, coming from um, volatility in oil prices. But we can't shy away from the fact that we need to ramp up oil production to actually you know, sustain the economy in terms of um, a boost in oil revenue. So even uh, because, I mean, the OPEC cap is just for, I think, to October, right? Mm -hmm. So they might yeah. meet again, and then they'll increase by 400,000. Yeah, they're already doing the 400,000 plus a barrel. They, you know, they, their meeting in July was when that actually happened. They make... And they've just sustained that yeah. increase in four, increase by 400,000 um, um, barrels per, per day. Per, barrels per day. So um, the, the cap actually was, or this gradual increase rather, was to continue until April 2022. Mm. So they're just going to keep reviewing um, the prices, reviewing um, their production quota um, um, relative to the rebound in global economy and um, 
you know, um, with the, you know, the demand for fossil fuels and all. So that's just going to continue f according to what um, OPEC Plus has said. So based on, so until their next meeting before, we'd likely see any possible reversal possible. in this stance. Yeah, yeah, because they're not listening so much to the U.S. and uh, India <laughs> calling for more. Okay, so let's move from oil a little bit. Uh, I, the CBN is planning to add wheat to the list of commodities uh, that will not be able to access uh, yeah. FX. What's driving that? Um, definitely the fact that um, they're trying to cut down on Nigeria's food import bill. And um, as they are saying, they want to invest in the value chain for wheat production, local production of wheat. So there is that conversation that is happening, but we cannot um, overlook the fact that this is going to have a significant impact on um, imported inflation and in turn other um, um, wheat related products like um, bread, pasta, um, biscuits and all. Now, the dynamics of this is, 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 is this. There is the fact that there is a shortage of forex. Now, some of these uh, um, companies that use wheat as a raw material for the production of flour and other uh, um, wheat-related commodities, they source, you know, just about 10%, 10 to 20% of their forex needs from the official window. Now, adding them, ad adding them to this import restrictions list will further push them to the autonomous to market the, to exactly. source for forex. And this is going to, you know, aggravate um, um, demand at the parallel market and, you know, further uh, uh, um, cause the narrative to depreciate at the parallel market. Now, there is that, there is that uh, um, dynamics. Now, we also look at the fact that adding this to the import list means that the, the CBN and federal government have to intensify efforts like now to boost wheat production in the country. Well, should the efforts, local production should, should, in it, should the ban come before the efforts or the... Because, exactly, I mean, so that, we, that's, that's where, that's where, uh, um, um, that's where we, we talk about investor concerns in terms of this um, somewhat on the spot policies, you know, that just spur up, you know, all of a sudden. And, you know, it's still in talks. It's still in talks. The CBN hasn't come out and said they have added it. There's, they are considering this. And um, I was reading, I was reading what the, what the CBN said. Now, the, what, what, the CBN is going to do this um, 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 in intervention in, wheat, in the wheat value chain after it has substantially made progress in rice and maize. Now, we, if we look at the time lag between when that is going to happen and when you know, uh, we're looking at Forex, for these companies sourcing Forex. We're looking at when um, that's going to eventually have an impact on the Nigerian economy, when that's going to have an impact on prices. Because in the short to medium term, we're saying that prices are going to rise. Mm -hmm. Not until we're seeing an, a substantial impact or substantial investment in the value chain. And that's not going to happen until after rice and maize. So clearly, there has to be um, some form of... Um, uh, 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 go, going back to the drawing board to make sure that whatever policies are being made in terms of food, because the, 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 the local production is affected by, you know, obviously currency pressures, is also affected by insecurity. So not until we're able to address insecurity that is significantly hurting uh, uh, um, the local production of a lot of these commodities before that we can start having this conversation. That is even stopping us from maximizing the exactly. increase in oil prices in exactly. the global space. Exactly, exactly. So, so, um, Yes, Nigeria can produce. And remember that Nigeria actually, the, the, the wheat actually that Nigeria produces is not the wheat that is used for bread, for, yes. pasta. So that's why we import this wheat actually. And then we also look at the fact that there is the demand gap because um, Nigeria produces, you know, just a little to meet the um, rising, you know, demand for, for wheat and, you know, wheat-related products. So you, you, there's you, just you, a lot of things Yeah, you know, you, know uh, you mentioned rice, and it just takes my mind back to when we were trying to, when the government was trying to encourage Nigerians to consume Nigerian rice, mm. you know, and not mm. import it. And I'm thinking of all the interventions that the CBN and other government agencies yes. did. And I'm thinking, can we learn from that? Did we see the uh, impact. expected mm -hmm. impact mm -hmm. from that? Are Nigerians now consuming locally produced rice is the price of rice what it ought to be because what happens is a lot of people still do the imported rice yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying so if if we didn't do so well with the rice mm -hmm. how do we hope to uh take that kind of example into the wheat it's, space it's, yeah when we're not even producing the quality mm -hmm. that we need to you know to as a raw material for most of these uh, edibles 
I mean, it just brings back um, um, the entire conversation about aggressively investing in the agricultural sector. Um, except we do that and also invest in, term, invest in the quality of these seedlings, invest in the quality of the product itself, ensure that it is produced at a maximum capacity um, that would actually meet local demand. Um, all of these um, restrictions, lists and all, will just keep having, um, and people will just keep pushing back on it, and it will keep having an unintended you know, consequence on Nigerian economy. And drive people more to the black markets and the exactly. parallel markets mm -hmm. and all that. Okay, well, what else is happening in the commodities market space? <laughs> I mean, uh, as usual, we're seeing an increase in uh, you know, commodity prices. Prices are still relatively high, um, despite the fact that we had the harvest season. Is that the um, insecurity of factor? Of course, yes, yes. So the insecurity factor is also the factor of the um, exchange rate passed through to these commodity prices. Um, we saw the price of flour. Flour has increased by about 100% compared to a year ago. Pasta has increased. Pasta that, I used to, that we used to buy for about 150 naira for one, now it's about 350. Yes. You know, we're seeing the price of eggs have also that. increased. You know, so um, prices of these commodities are still increasing. And that's, you know, primarily driven by... And that's in spite of the harvest scene. Exactly. And this is primarily driven by um, currency pressures and um, supply, um, um, supply chain um, um, bottlenecks. And we're also seeing the fact that um, higher energy costs are are also higher energy costs and logistic costs are also you know feeding into commodity prices so that's what's happening currently and there's all the the the, the talk right now is, uh, for commodity prices is you know basically surrounding currency for the exchange rate passed to effect to these commodity prices and now we're about to add wheat to <laughs> and i uh, want to add wheat, wheat to. <laughs> Exactly. Well, mm, we'll pray and hope for better days. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dumebi AK, for, you, for uh, your me. analysis this morning and Thank enjoy you. the rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Okay. So we'll take a break now. After that, we're going to discuss the microeconomic stability, and that will be uh, after the break. Just stay with us. It's Business Morning on Channels Television.